After strolling through Kensington Gardens and past the Round Pond, you can see Kensington Palace, which has been a residence of the British royal family since the 17th century. From the outside, it doesn't strike you as being a palace, but as you'll see in a minute, the inside is quite palatial. Kensington Palace was originally a two-story mansion built by Sir George Coppin in 1605 in the village of Kensington. The mansion was purchased in 1619 by the first Earl of Nottingham and was then known as Nottingham House. Shortly after William and Mary assumed the throne as joint monarchs in 1689, they began searching for a residence better suited for the comfort of the asthmatic William. King William and Queen Mary asked Christopher Wren, the architect of St. Paul's Cathedral, to turn Nottingham House into a palace. His extension is largely what you see today. The clerk of works was told to do the job quickly and cheaply, so that's why Kensington Palace was built with bricks rather than stone. It was completed in six months, and William and Mary moved in on Christmas Eve 1689. Over the next few years, the couple added a gallery, the Queen's apartments, and a new entrance. Tragically, Mary didn't have long to enjoy her new palace because she died from smallpox in 1694. In 1702, William fell off his horse, broke his collarbone, and died a few days later. We're going to start with the modern royals, which of course includes perhaps the most loved modern royal, Princess Diana, who lived here from 1981 until her death in 1997. The King's Staircase leads to the King's State Apartments. It was decorated by William Kent and was completed around 1726. All of the elite climbed these stairs to visit the King, but could only enter if their clothes and jewels were acceptable to the guards. The King's Gallery was built in 1700 for William III. He would meet with his spies and plan his military campaigns here. In 1694, Robert Morden made the wind dial, which was attached to a weather vane on the roof. The wind dial was helpful to the king because he could see if the wind would allow an invasion fleet to come up the English Channel. William Kent transformed the gallery by 1725 as the green velvet was replaced by red damask. Kent and his assistants painted the seven large ceiling paintings, which showed scenes from the life of Ulysses. Kent also designed the picture frames. Most of the paintings were Italian and dated from the 16th and 17th centuries. It was in this room that King William caught the chill that led to his death in 1702. The Coppola Room is the most decorated room in the palace and this is where George II and Queen Caroline hosted lavish parties. William Kent decorated the room and made it look like a Roman palace. This is a clock and music box. It was completed in 1743 and was bought by Princess Augusta. The king's drawing room would be full of people who came to the king's parties in search of power and prestige. The king's bedchamber was next door, and at some point, he'd come out and make an appearance. Guests would form a circle, hoping to speak with him. This room was the site of a famous royal argument in 1735. While King George was away, Queen Caroline reorganized the paintings and took down many of the Italian paintings that George loved. When he returned, he insisted that the Italian paintings be put back. The presence chamber is where the king would sit on his throne under a crimson silk damask throne canopy. Elite guests would be shown in to bow and kiss the king's hand. Before we see the royal queen's apartments, let's take a look at some spectacular jewels. We're going to see Queen Victoria's emerald necklace, earrings, brooch, and tiara. We'll also see jewelry from Queen Victoria's granddaughter, Princess Louise, including her diamond tiaras.
The Queen's Gallery, also known as the Long Gallery, is where Queen Mary was able to showcase her passion for collecting Asian treasures. There were 150 pieces of oriental porcelain in this room alone, and you can see some over the fireplace. Mary was crowned queen at the age of 28, and in 1677, she married her older cousin William, who was twice her age. William was from the Netherlands, and it was there that Mary developed her passion for collecting treasures from Asia. Mary also used the gallery for recreation, and it was often filled with ladies-in-waiting working on their embroidery. There were bird cages and red velvet set up in the windows and velvet cushions on the floor for her dogs. The Queen's bedroom was once a room where Queen Mary entertained friends, but prior to that it was her bedroom. In 1691, the Queen added an additional bedchamber, so this room wasn't needed anymore as a bedroom. The bed displayed here is thought to be the bed in which James Edward Stuart, son of King James II, was born at St. James's Palace in 1688. The Privy Chamber was one of Queen Caroline's favorite entertaining rooms. The ceiling painting depicts the Roman gods Mars, the god of war, and Minerva, the goddess of wisdom, surrounded by emblems representing the arts and sciences. Mars represented King George, and Minerva represented Queen Caroline. The painting was done by William Kent in 1722. The paneling in the Queen's dining room is from the 17th century. In this room, William and Mary would share private dinners of fish and beer, and Mary would take tea here. The portrait over the mantelpiece isn't of a queen or princess, it's of a much beloved housekeeper, Catherine Elliot. Catherine had been nursed to the infant James II, Mary's father, and later served as a court dresser and woman of the bedchamber to both his wives. Mary II had originally filled the Queen's drawing room with porcelain in 1694. In 1940, during World War II, a bomb damaged the room and destroyed the paneling, so it was replaced by the wallpaper that we see today. Queen Caroline's closet is a small room with a lot of history. Originally, it was William III's little bedchamber. George I used this room to store books, but they were removed after Queen Caroline discovered in 1727 many important drawings that were hidden in a cabinet. She put up 300 small paintings, miniatures, and embroideries in this room. By the end of the 18th century, they had been moved to other royal homes, and the room was converted to make dressing rooms for the Duchess of Kent and a bathroom for Princess Victoria. It was in this room that Queen Anne, Mary's younger sister, had a terrible argument with her childhood friend and confidant, Sarah Churchill, Duchess of Marlborough in 1711. As a result of the argument, Sarah and her husband were stripped of their high rank positions. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Kensington Palace. If you click on this video link, you can see another great London palace, Buckingham Palace. Thanks for watching.